Good morning, everyone, and welcome to class. I uh, hope that you had a good week and weekend. Uh, please confirm that you can hear my voice and you can see my camera so that we can start. Please confirm that you can hear my voice and you can see my camera so that we can start today's lesson. Thank you, Gita. Thank you, Purity. Thank you, Ambonyo. I'm going to address the issue of noise in the background. Thank you, Gideon. Andrew, Andrew, can you hear and see me? Justin, Karoki, Karuki Miruri, Kevin Mutai, Kimutai, Lucy Wanjiru. Manasses Muni, Masiware, can you hear and see me? Mutuna Mwema, can you see and hear me? Sylvia. All right then, so well then we can start. Uh, so most of you can hear me and see. Now I want us to start today's class. I want us to begin by doing a small recap of what we did. A small recap of what we did in the previous class and some you know some things that we did, some things that we we were able to learn from the previous class so that we can now uh hope into today's class. Now some of the things that we looked at in the previous class were things like why C++ is considered an object-oriented language or what are the features of an object-oriented language. So I want you to remind me what are the features of an object-oriented language? What makes an, a language object-oriented? What are the features of an object-oriented language? The features of an object oriented language. What are they? Lucy Wanjiru, Manasses Masiware. What are the features of an object oriented language? Polymorphism, true. What is another feature? What is another feature of? Yes, that is true. Another feature of object oriented languages? Inheritance, that is true. Another feature? Encapsulation, true. Another? Instruction, yes, also called data hiding or information hiding. Another? There are two that we have uh, you've not mentioned, and they are the most basic class. Another, and the other one is 
object thank you uh -huh. yeah so those are the features those are the features of object oriented languages a language is object oriented if it supports the use of classes and objects if it has the element of inheritance encapsulation polymorphism encapsulation is the use of classes okay binding of data and attribute data or attributes and methods or functions into a class is called encapsulation as we looked in the previous class then inheritance the ability to inherit properties or to take up properties um, that that ability and then polymorphism is the ability to is the ability to take up many forms an object can take up many forms yeah and a class is a prototype yeah that it's a blueprint of a real world entity yeah that supports data and methods and then an object is a real world entity which has the properties of a class right yeah and we looked at some several uh, I, I need you even as we continue to go on with this course you also relate what we are studying to what we are studying in object oriented system analysis and design because they are perfectly related so uh, that being said, I uh, I want us now today to go straight into the features of C++. What uh, you know, the, some of the features of C++. Uh, let me open this up for you so that now you can. Now, we are going to look at uh, some of these things as I've shared on the screen. Uh, you're going to see them there. The screen is there. So I hope you can see the screen there. I've tried to expand it to 150%. I've zoomed it to 150 so that we can we can see it. Now, before we even uh, continue, before we even continue, we look at what is going on and what, what are the features of C language. Uh, I want us to know... I want us. I want to know from you whether you know of this software called Code Blocks. Do you know that software called Code Blocks? Do you have it installed in your machine? Exactly, Justin. That is true because you used it to program using C language. Yeah. All right. Who doesn't have code blocks so that I can share a link which you can use to download a free version or an open source version of it? Who doesn't have code blocks so that I can share? Or let me just share so that whoever does not have it, you can download and install it uh you can download and install it so that we now from here yes thank you gideon i'm going to share it so that now from here onwards you're going to you're, you're going to follow through even as we are learning so let me share the link let me share the link so that you can you can actually download it for yourself and install it all right Okay, let's see. Let me see where it is. Okay. 
Let me. <clears throat> oh, it's here it is. So let me share it with you. It is an open open source software, so it's freely available. So. So use that link that I've just shared to to download and install code blocks. Now anyone else who hasn't installed use it because now we are going to use it from now henceforth to look at the features of C and also how to code in C. Okay, uh, I mean in C plus plus. Sorry. So please use that link so that you can install, you can download and install that uh, software. Then when you are done installing, all right, you can install, you can still uninstall, uninstall it. You can uninstall code blocks, keep coach. You can uninstall code blocks, keep coach. Yeah, you uninstall code blocks and uh, install it again. <clears throat> And then remember, as you are installing, do not uncheck checked boxes. As you install, do not check checked boxes. Yeah, just keep clicking next. Yeah, so as you install, do not uncheck checked boxes, all right? Do not uncheck checked boxes. Why? Because the 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 check box as you are using that wizard to install the boxes that have been checked, they have been checked because they are the most fundamental. They are the most fundamental features of code blocks. That, which meaning that if you uncheck, means you can lose those features and you and your code blocks software may misbehave as we begin. So as you install, you just keep clicking next, next, next. If you tell if it tells you, do you want to do this? Click yes, next, next. Just click next as you keep on until you finish. If it requires you to provide in some certain information, provide it, click next. Let's keep, but don't check the unchecked boxes. All right? Yeah. So when you are done, you can tell me that you are done. When you are done, you can tell me that you are done. And... Uh, after you're done, you also open it, and then it should open something like this. Let me share the screen here. So that is how it should look like when you open it when you are done installing and opening this is how it should it should look like this is how it should look like right so when you open it that is how it should look like so when you are done installing uh, please if you are installing please just uh let me know in the chat area that you're installing so that I can know that I'm actually waiting for people. So installed already. Okay, thank you, Warren. Mutune, you're installing. All right, who else is installing? Installed already. Okay, thank you, Masi. Still installing. Thank you, Purity. Installing. Thank you, Gideon. Keep 
Muhia installed. Hussein Dokata. Hussein Dokata. Have you installed or you installing? Kanye Sophia. Oh, oh, installed. Okay. Uh, Leland Paul. Leland Paul have you installed. All right, Hussein. Linus Riri. Lucy Wanjiru. Have you installed Manasses? Okay, Linus. Mkauda Masaru. Mkauda Masaru. Do you have it on your laptop? Or uh, do you have it? Or of Akis, do you have it? Okay, thank you, Mkauda Masaru. Or do you have it? Uh, or of Akis. Done, Lucy Wanjiru, you are done, okay. So open it and uh, ensure that it looks like mine, like the screen I have shared. So when you're done, you open it. Uh, ensure it looks like the screen I have shared. Hmm. Okay, Oro. Thank you, Oro. Please, if you had it before or you have it, ensure you open it. Uh, open it so that you can just uh, ensure that um, it, it never got corrupted or something. Yeah? Ensure that it's, it's there and it's, uh, you can actually open it and you can see the home screen like as I've shared in, on your screen. So when you are done installing, you can say you're done. So uh, 10 minutes will be enough so that you can finish installing. For those who are installing, please uh, finish installing. Please finish installing so that we can continue.
Okay, Gideon, you are done. Thank you. And uh, who else? Uh, somebody else was installing. Purity, are you done? Mutune Mwema. Keep quiet also. Keep quiet, you have agreed you want to install and install again. So tell us when you are done. Yes, it is the same move here. It is the same code blocks that you installed last class. So open it and uh, open it and see what they, uh, you know, it displays the home page like the one I have on screen. Yeah. It is the same one move here. Okay, purity. Oh, shared screen keeps loading. Please load from your end because uh, from mine it's a uh, very it's, it's okay. Let me share it again then if uh, it's loading. Thank you, Mkauda Masaru. You can see you are done. Let me share this screen again. There it is. Yeah. 
So keep quiet. Can you see the shared screen? Abdira Shidwari, are you with us? Okay, then. Uh, if you don't have a laptop, this might be a little bit challenging. Well, okay, let's keep on. Now, <clears throat> the first thing we want to look at, the first thing we want to look at about C++ is the syntax for C++. So that is the first thing you want to look at, the syntax for C++, C++ syntax. What is syntax? Syntax, uh, I, I think I, I, I already know you know. I know what, what, I know you know what syntax is from your previous programming experience. When we talk about syntax in programming, what are we talking about? syntax syntax in programming what is the syntax of a language what is the syntax of a language syntax it is a set of rules that defines the combination of symbols true it is the rules uh -huh. Uh -huh. somebody else It is the symbols used to write a given language. Uh -huh. That is true, Ambonya. Mm -hmm. What else? It is the rules that help create the structure of a language. That is true, Justin. It is the rules that specify the correct combined sequence of symbols that can be used to form a correctly structured program. That is also true. It is rules. Mm -hmm. The structure of statements in a computer, it is a set of rules and principles that governs the structure of sentences. True. Now, all of you are correct. The syntax of a language is basically the structure of that language, <clears throat> the unique structure of that language. Every language has its own structure, and that structure is made up of symbols, it's a specific set of symbols that do specific things, specific set of keywords that do specific things, keywords, specific set of operators that do specific things, uh, and other kind of 
things about that language that are specific to that language, specific libraries, specific functions. So the syntax of a language is its specific structure of its unique structure. And therefore it is the rule. It is the general rule of programming using that language. So when we say a syntax, the syntax is a rule for a language or the structure of that language. So today we want us to look at uh, the I want to look at the syntax and other things like the operators, the variables, okay? So the syntax is all that. Syntax is everything like that. So the operators, variables, keywords, uh, special symbols, all those things that make up that language is what you call the syntax. So first of all, we want to look at the general structure of the language, the general structure. How do we write code in C++? So we are looking at syntax and part one, we are looking at the structure of the language or the the format for C++ program. Let me call it format. Format is better. The format for a C++ program. Now I want you to open your code blocks and uh, open your code blocks and uh, let me open it for you here. You can see it on the screen. Then click this, click this, uh, whatever I've highlighted, create a new project. Click that, create a new project. Mutune, what is uh, the issue? What is the issue? What what does it say? Does it give any error message? The rest you can open, you can click create a new project. You can click create a new project. I think in the previous class we had looked at this, yeah? But uh, it's just a recap. Okay, Mutune, your machine is a 32 bit or a 64 bit? Sixty four. All right. Let me help you. Share a message, you can't find the compiler part. Your machine is a 64 bit, keep correct, or a 32 bit. Download this. And install whatever you have and download this one. This should work on a 64 bit machine. We we'll see if it can resolve the error. install that uh -huh. 
and as you install you can basically you can as you keep and installing the previous one and installing that you can keep looking at what i'm illustrating here so i want you to create a new project click that then you click console application i want to, you to follow the screen that i've shared there uh, click console application console application just means that you are creating an application where the output will be displayed on a console window like a command prompt okay console application then go click go then click next then you are developing using c++ so you click c++ there next you give it a title i'll call it introduction i can click and then you click next so ensure it has a path there where it is going to be stored also please notice i think i actually looked at this in the previous class so ensure you notice this it should be dot cbp okay so don't change it dot cbp dot cbp is the file extension for all c plus plus files all right dot cbp then you go ahead and uh, click next and then uh, of course for me i already have a project like that are you sure you want to use this directory i'll just say yes then i click finish are you sure you want to overwrite it yes for me yeah uh because i'm i've renamed it the reason why I, that message has come is because of i've renamed using the same same name of, a, of an already existing project so here we are uh we go through again as we went through last class so uh this is the the menu bar this is the menu bar this one so file edit view search project build debug portion tools all this is the menu bar this is the toolbar this contains this one here below this one is the toolbar or the standard toolbar its work is to provide shortcuts to things that you would otherwise do by passing through the menu yeah so instead of when you are running a program instead of clicking build and run or build and run you just come here this shortcut here build and run this green this green button so these ones contain if you want to save you click here instead of file and save all right or save everything or save project as, as yeah just click save so these are shortcuts these are shortcuts then here this is called the resource window this is called the resource window here this one okay this one at the left so you keep it that way just keep it that way uh can keep it can try and increase there so you can actually click here and see some of the resources that are here so this is where your projects will be this is the panel where your project will be uh, this one will not use it this one we will not use it this one will not use it and this one will not use it so we are going to use this one projects right so this is a path for your project so for you to open your project just double click on sources can you see there double click on sources sources you don't double click on sources up then you don't double click on main.cpp main.cpp so now when you don't uh, click main.cpp now this is the main project that you formed all right this is the main project that you formed so from the previous class we said that this statement this first statement is called a what this first statement is called a what yes musioki it is called a header file yes true linear it is also called a preprocessor directory a preprocessor directive or a header file the work of the header file or the preprocessor directive is to tell the compiler that the program being written 
is a program in C++. So when that header file is used, the compiler will always use that to recognize the to recognize the code you are writing as C++ code. So that when it it is compiling, if it is able to generate errors and show you errors because it knows that that code is C++. All right? Yeah. C++ code, so it's called a header file. What is the question, Musio Kimwandwa? And uh, I think, Musio Kimwandwa, you are now offline. All right, if you have a question, you just post it to our chat area so that we can go together. Yeah, after creating a new project guitar, you click console application. So steps. Number one. Click create new project. Then follow the wizards. That appears. So after the wizard appears, you click console application. And uh, you click next. You click next again, click next, then you select C plus plus, click next. Name your project. <coughs> click next, then click finish. <coughs> that is how you do that. What are you saying, Musioki? Oh, okay. So those are the steps. You keep the path. Basically, the path, uh, the path is for Warren Mondo. The path is just to select where your project is going to be stored. So you can browse. Kama hiyo pata ina nini? I know something if that part has nothing so let me just show again here let me show again here let me create a new project here and i want you to follow so uh project i'm going to go to file no view i'm going to go to start page so create a new project that's where we begin so i, I need you to follow okay <clears throat> i need you to follow i need you to follow uh when you are clicked create a new project you click console application, this one, console application. Then you click go. Then here you click next, right? Then this you are want to develop using which language? C++, so you choose C++. Then you click next. Then title, you give it a title, like welcome to C++, whatever title, yeah? Welcome to C++. Then, as you type, you are going to, this path is going to be generated automatically, okay? Automatically, automatically, but you can change it. The way to change it is to click here, 
all right the three dots here these three dots you click and then you change you just change you say where you want it to be stored so you follow the path you change where you want it to be stored if you want to change that is but this one don't tamper with it can you see this one cbp welcome to c plus plus dot cbp this one do not change this one is the one which identifies that project as a project written in c plus plus okay then you click next then all this out of shika anything up you click finish okay so welcome to c plus plus joey he make what created so says i can do na main file yake ndio hiyo okay yeah so that is how you create but then i want to close this project i'm not using it yeah who else needs help keep coach error message display the debugging check in this application has failed could you send me uh send me a uh, an image send me an image in my whatsapp send me an image on this message so that we can resolve it my number is on the portal My number is already on the portal but i will say i've shared so send an image Okay then. If it has worked, then we can continue. All right. So I think you have followed the steps. I've just uh, repeated the steps there. So this is the structure. This is the format for a C plus plus. So I want you to share. I mean, I want you to follow the screen that I've shared. This is the format for. For a C plus plus uh, uh, program or a C plus plus project, that is the basic. That is the basic. Uh, that is the basic format, the basic structure. So we have said this is a header file or a preprocessor directive. Its work is to tell the compiler that the program being written is a is a C plus plus program. It recognizes the code as C plus plus. And using namespace std is a library that contains all commonly used functions in c++ so that you don't have to rewrite them they have already been pre-coded the person who developed the language pre-coded all the functions you would use inside that library code using namespace then int main is the main function is the main function all right and then now inside here you can have the other code that you want and then you have return zero this is called the return statement the return statement its work is to generate output when the code has been run okay its work is to generate output when the code has been run all right so all the main all code all code is written here all code is written here. i hope you can see these things that i'm typing all code is written there inside the main function all code is written there inside the main function right so that is the the structure the format that is the format for c plus plus code it is simply as that hash include io stream using namespace std int main and then uh, you open calibres you write your code you finish the code with return zero then close the main function that is basically the form uh, the format for c++ code now let us go ahead now let me yeah 
let us go ahead and look at so now we've looked at the format now let us look at the variables c plus plus variable so we are done with c plus plus format okay so that is the format the that one that's the format so now we are at c plus plus variables what are the variables in c plus plus now if you can remind me from your previous programming experience what is a variable 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 Yes, a variable is a value that will change from time to time in the program. Uh, that is, uh, uh, it is not exactly that. It may be that, but it's not exactly that. That's not the main definition. Warren says it's a name of a memory location. It's a name. Uh huh. I can give you 80% for that. Karaoke, it's a name of a memory location. I can give you 80% of that. Uh, it's a variable that will change from time to time. I'll give you 60% for that. Lil and Paul, variables are used to store information to be referenced and used by programs. I'll give you 80 for that. It's a temporary memory location in a system. Yeah, give you 90 for that. I'll give you 90 for that. Mm -hmm. What is a variable you are skip trying? Yes, variables are used to store data types. They are used to store data types or data. They are used to store data. Yeah. It's a name of a memory location used to store data and its values can be changed and be reused. Uh-huh. Yes. So that is 95 for Warren. 95. Milan is a value that can change depending on conditions of information passed to the program. I'll give you 80 for that. Uh -huh. A temporary memory used to store data of a program. I'll give you 90 for that. A value that can change all right okay now a, a variable is basically a space in memory from into which you can store and from which we can access data from a variable is a space in memory it is a memory location as those who have said it's a memory location it is a space it's a memory location where you can store data and where you can access data from that is what a variable is so you want to look at how to declare variables in c plus plus how do we declare variables in c plus plus it is not different from c all right now there are some rules that govern thank you sylvia there are some rules that govern variable declaration okay there are some rules that govern variable declaration. Now, when I say variable, thank you, Mutune, that is also correct. So it's an address, it's a storage place. 
when i say variable declaration i mean assigning data to a variable that is what variable declaration is is assigning data to a variable yeah or giving a variable data okay or telling the telling the compiler to create a space in memory for a particular data set that is what data declaration is it is assigning data to a variable now when we are declaring variables there are overarching rules there are overarching rules that guide how variables need to be declared in other words if you don't declare those variables in that way the compiler is not going to see them it's going to be incorrect and the during running the program the program will produce what you call syntax errors errors due to defaulting the rules of that language okay so what are some of the rules from your previous programming experience what are some of the rules of variable declaration what are some of the rules when assigning data to variables from c c language what are some of the rules Yeah, they cannot start with a number. That is true, Ombonio. They cannot start with a number, but they can include numbers. But it is not the number should not start. It should start with a letter. Yeah, it can also not start with a what? A special symbol. True. Masi word it should never be a reserved word. True. You cannot use something like C out. C out is a reserved word for C plus plus. You cannot use C out, or you cannot use main. Yeah, or if. Those are keywords, yeah. True. Uh, no white space is allowed within the variable name. That is true. If you want to use a white space, you, you use what? If you want to use a space, use what? Use an underscore. Yeah. Uh, Ombonyo, space is not allowed. That is true. Kanye, Sophia, one cannot. One cannot use space. Yeah, inside the variable, that is true. The first letter of a variable should be a letter. Yes, the first letter of a variable should be a letter. The first letter of a variable should be a letter. But not an underscore. Correction there, uh, Mutune when you are declaring a variable never start with a special symbol an underscore is a special symbol so when you declare you can start with a letter you should not start with a number and you should not start with a special symbol so you can use an underscore if you want to separate for instance when you want to use a space but you can't use a space because a space will bring an error you use an underscore okay yeah Leland capital letters and small letters are distinct. That is very true. In other words, C++ is case sensitive, right? And normally C++ uses small letters, right? Small letters. Uh, and when you use capital letters, remember that the word class is not uh, case sensitive. So we are saying C++ is case sensitive. <clears throat> So, class is not equal to class, right? Like a class with a small c and a class with capital C, they are not equal. These are two different things because C++ plus plus is case sensitive. That is exactly what Leland Paul is saying. Justin, observing upper and lower case when assigning, yeah, that is true. C++ plus is case sensitive. That is basically what you are saying. Purity, names must begin with capital letter that is not true it is not true that names must begin with a capital letter yeah for instance if i say in x yeah names is not it's not exactly true that it must begin with a capital letter all right yeah so you don't have to begin with a capital letter but if you have a capital letter if you use that variable again in the in the code 
and show it's also a capital letter because C++ is case sensitive. Uh, you cannot use C++ keyword as a variable. That is true. Yeah, it's exactly what uh, somebody else had said before. Uh, Masiware had said that before. You cannot use a keyword as a variable name. That is true. Mm -hmm. Every variable should exist in the left hand side of an operator should be exist in the left hand side of an operator. What do you mean by should exist in the left hand side of an operator? Do you mean the name of the variable or what? The name of the variable to say they must be defined. That is very true, Masiware. They must be defined. You cannot use a variable in your program that you never declared in the first place. So that is very true. They must be defined or declared before they are used. That is true. Hussein Lokata, I'm still waiting for your uh, clarification on your point. Variable name. In other words, um, Lokata, do you mean that uh, what you mean is that you cannot use a variable, you cannot use, you cannot name a variable without using a a semicolon in other words uh, just like any other line of code before after you end the name of the variable at the right hand side of the variable you have to end it to the semicolon because just like any other line of code you have to end it with a semicolon okay but talking about operators operators we are going to get into operators and there are two three categories of operators postfix operators, prefix operators, and infix operators. So we are going to look at those operators, Hussein, and look at how those relate to the variables. All right. But again, uh, yeah, so those are the rules of variable declaration. And they apply also here, because C++ is a creation from C. So the applications of C, they apply. So now having looked at that, now let us uh, go further and look at uh, data types because now variables and data types they go along right in fact there's a rule that uh, you've not said is that when you are naming a variable you should begin with its what its data type okay you should begin with its data type so when you're naming a variable use a data type now <clears throat> c++ has its own data type a data type is a description of a kind of data yeah it's a description of a kind of data now data a data type specifies the type of data that a variable can store such as an integer float character string etc okay uh, now there are different kinds of very uh, data types that we can use to name variables let me share the screen here so that we can follow through so that we can follow through uh, let me have that. Let me share this screen. So there we are. There we are. So basic, these are some, some of the data types that are used in C++. Now, we have car a car is used to store one character or one byte okay one character can have several bytes uh, one character one byte right so a character like a b c d such things right then we have int yeah int is used to store integer values like one two three four five such float okay. float is used to store uh, numbers that have one decimal point so a float can store an integer and a float what do i mean an int can store a number like 10 doesn't have decimal places a float can store 10.1 yeah so float supports numbers that have decimal places natural numbers and numbers that have 
decimal places. One decimal place, so 10.3, 6.5, 5.9, things like that, 100.3, things like that, yeah? Uh, double, double is a data type for storing numbers that have more than two, oh, okay, more than one, two or more decimal places, okay? And then long double, long double. Now, these are the three kinds of basic data types. We have car, int, float, and double, okay? And we also have another called string, car, int, float, and double. So those are the basic data types, car, int, float, and double, right? So basic data types, we have car, int, float, and double. Those are the basic data types. Let me write them there because uh, you can follow through. The video is recorded so you can see those interactions. So basic data types, car, int, float, and double. Now within those data types, there are sub data types. So what you call derived data types. For instance, uh, when you have something like car, car for character, you'll have others like signed car, which is basically like a car, an unsigned car, a short car, a signed short car, an unsigned short car, but we are not going to be using those, okay? But then there is this, uh, these ones for signed int for storing negative numbers, okay? Unsigned int for storing positive numbers, are we together? So int is for numbers, naturally numbers. So signed int is for storing negative numbers, all right? From negative 32, 768 to 32, 767. Then unsigned int is to for storing positive numbers. So we have 0 to 32, 767, okay? In other words, C++, ukitumia int, you can only have numbers that reach 32, 7, 6, 7. So ukifanya multiplication, ya numbers yenye ni kubwa, addition of numbers yenye ni kubwa zinapita 32, 7, 67, na ulizi define kama int. Haita letter error, but your output ita kwa different, as you will see later to kick on. Out on is on numbers, ita, ita fanya like the way a calculator, these old calculators do. They have the first numbers and then ina wanyesha letter E. Kwenyeshe yon number yiko complete. So ukitumia int ita behave yon. Ukitumia signed int ni ya kusupport negative numbers from negative 32768 to 32767. Ukitumia unsigned int, uta, it's for, unsigned int ni the normal int, okay? For positive numbers, 0 to 32767. Then short int is for short, uh, short numbers okay and then signed short int again is also for short numbers from negative to positive then there is this one this this signed na unsigned they are not very very crucial but kunai long int long int is for storing long numbers yeah because the natural int the normal int can only store from negative 32768 to positive 32767. So long int now is to support bigger numbers. For instance, where you are, where you are, the, the program will be calculating, uh, will be working with numbers that are bigger than 32767. You'll have to declare them using a long int instead of an int. Okay. Then we have. Uh, Plot, we already have discussed plot. Plot is for one decimal number, number that has one decimal point. Double, it's for two or more decimal places. The long double is for a number that has more than three decimal places, three or more decimal places. This one, long double, okay? So when we are declaring variables, you have to use their data types. Now I want you, I want to close that screen and share back uh this other screen here let me share back this other screen here let me share back this screen here share this
So let me share the screen here. All right, there it is. So when we are declaring a variable, we declare it inside the main function. We declare it inside the main function. So you can declare int x. Int x just means this. The name of the variable is x. The name of the variable is x. And its data type is what? It's int. That's basically what that means. You have declared a variable. You called it x. X is a preferred name, just a name. As long as it's not a keyword, it should be a preferred name, a name you just you prefer. And also, names that you use for variables, they need to be memorable. So you have to use short names. Of course, even long names will be supported. There's no problem. It's only that it's advisable to use shorter names because it helps programming to be easy and not a lot of you see like you crowded sana. So use short names, uh memorable names. So I've used Nell. So X is the name of the variable and int is its data type. All right. Or we can have something like car C. Yeah. So C is the name of the variable and car is its data type. So every variable must be declared with its data type. Or uh, we can have float school fees. Yeah, float school fees. School fees is a variable that will be storing school fees, and it's a float data type, meaning that that variable can store a number that has one decimal place. And if it is double, it can store two decimal places. That variable, and if it uh, if it is a long double, it can store three or more decimal places like 100,000.46856 something like that yeah long double yeah then uh so that is about the the the, the variables i mean the data type. so so we are looking at c plus plus syntax we have moved on from format the format of C plus plus to Kangalia Benina Kaki code naturally how that program looks like before you have written any code in it. Then we have looked at the variables for C plus plus. We have looked at the memo the 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 key the key things to remember when declaring variables that is the rules of variable declaration then we have looked at data types we have looked at the different kinds of data types now I want us to look at I want us to look at keywords, keywords that belong to C++. So let me stop sharing this screen and let me share another. Yeah, remember while declaring a car, the value should be in single quotes. That is not when declaring, it is when initializing. I hope you know the difference between initializing and declaring. Anyone? Do you know the difference between declaring and initializing? Like declaring a variable or initializing a variable. What is the difference? What is the difference between declaring a variable and initializing a variable? What is the difference? What is the difference between declaring a variable and initializing a variable? Somebody. What is the difference between declaring a variable and initializing a variable in C++ or in any kind of programming?
Mm -hmm. So declaration means, uh, let me share the screen. There you go. So declaration means creating a variable. Yes, that is true. And then initializing is naming a variable, declaring is assigning a value. No, it is the other way around, Ombonyo. Declaring is naming a variable and initializing is assigning a constant value that cannot be changed during when the program is running, right? At runtime. Yeah, Leland Paul, initializing is declaring a variable and assigning a value at the declaration time. Yeah, initializing is assigning a value, okay? Yeah, you can actually assign it during declaration or later. You can declare it and assign it, and or you can assign it, you can declare and then you assign it later. Now let's look at two ways of initializing. The first way is to initialize at declaration level, and the other one is to initialize separately. So this is how. Let's go to, let me share, let me cut the screen and share another screen for code blocks. Uh, let me share this. So we have this. So for instance, we want to say uh, int x is equals, oh, okay, int x, int x is a variable. Okay, let's have int x, let's delete all this. Let's have int x. So we have int x here x is a variable which will store data of int type okay so this is declaration we have declared we have told the compiler to create space in memory that has that will be called x and uh, it's going to store int then we can choose to initialize it now initializing is giving it a constant value which the user cannot change when the program is running or it can that value cannot be changed at runtime okay so it in x we can initialize this now to initialize in text is equals to then the constant value that is how we normally initialize variables we have the data type the name of the variable and equal sign because equal sign is used to assign variables then the constant value and of course the semicolon in order to avoid syntax errors yeah so that is how we 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 initialize the other way of initializing so this is the first way declaration initialization at declaration level initialize initialization at declaration level but then we can also initialize it in another way we can say in y okay so in y that is declaration then we assign a value we initialize so we say y is equals to 10 that way okay that is a that is how you initialize okay sorry yeah that is how you initialize so this one the second way it is initializing separately once on a declare and then we we'll initialize okay but here when we declare and we we'll initialize at the same sentence okay as uh, yeah so those are the two ways of initializing okay yeah so uh what was i saying about initializing initializing is assigning a constant value is assigning a constant value now uh let me check out the screen and we can go back to our other screen here mm -hmm. let me share screen just a minute i'm having an error in sharing my screen
All right, there we go. The screen is coming to your screen. All right, there it is. So keywords in C++. Oh, I remembered what I was trying to answer. I was trying to answer who? There was somebody I was trying to answer here. Uh, it is Ombonyo Hendricks who was saying, remember while declaring a car, the value should be in single quotes. Now, I was trying to correct that by saying, it is not when declaring that a car that the value should be in single quotes. It is when initializing. So when you are declaring, when you are initializing, this is how it looks like when you're initializing a car on Bonyo for other and also others, the rest. Uh, this is how you initialize. So if you're initializing a car, if you have something like car Y, I'm a car letter. Let's call it a letter. Car letter is how you initialize it. Is equal to, then you have this two semicolons, okay? Uh, no, not semicolons, but the two quotes, the two full quotes. You know, there's a difference. There's a difference between this, this, and this. There is that. Let me see that difference. There is that uh, difference. You only single quotes. I'm talking about double quotes, okay? double quotes that way yeah. so that's how you initialize okay so on bonyo hendrix you only use the quotes when you are initializing not when you are declaring okay yeah but when you are initializing int and double and float and long double you don't use quotes okay you don't use quotes I hope I've answered your concern on Bonyo Hendrix. The double quote is for string. Also for car. Let me let me uh, return that and see how that will work. All right, yeah, true. Thank you, Ambonio. I just uh Thank you for clarifying that the double quote is for string, the single quote is for for car. Uh, I've just confirmed from my code. Look at the code that I've shared there. Your your code blocks up. Uh, I've just run the. I have run. Let me see where this is. Yes, I've run here. So I've run this console application, this one here. Let me share, okay. Uh, it needs to be shared. The console application comes separately. So let me share it separately. All right, so let me share it so that you can see what I've, the output that I have. All right, there it is. Okay. So the letter is C. Can you see that the letter is C? Basically, I've just coded. I've used the code to to basically use that to basically confirm what Mbonyo was trying to say. And I found it is true that the double quote is for string. The single quote is for car. So let me share back. Let me share back the the screen for code blocks. Yeah, that way. So this look at what I've highlighted here. 
Carleta is equals to C. And then, of course, Nimeongeza E. But is in Tawambia is a new four. Of course, there are people already know what that is about. But you to near display. Yeah, I was just trying to check whether this is correct. Okay. Yeah, so this is correct that when you are initializing a car, thank you, Hendrix, you use uh, the single quotes, this one, the single quotes, and not the, the double quotes. You use the single quotes. But when you're initializing a string, you use the double quotes. Okay. All right. So thank you, Hendrix, for that correction. All right. Uh, let's move on because we are still going to code more. So we are just trying to prove that that is true. Let us move on to keywords. <clears throat> Let me share the screen. Mm -hmm. Let me share the screen here. All right. I'm having a problem sharing my screen, just... All right, let me share the screen. Okay, there we are. All right, so keywords, C++ keywords. A keyword is a reserved word in a programming language. Again, we say that you cannot use a, a keyword as a variable name or a constant name. There are different kinds of keywords in C, C++, auto, break, case, car, const, continue, default, do, double, else, enum, extend, float, for, go to, if, int, long, register, return, short, signed, size of, static, struct for structure, switch, type, definition, union, unsigned, void, volatile, while. These are key words <clears throat> and key words, you cannot use them. Okay? You cannot use them when you are you cannot use them when you are declaring variables and each keyword has a particular uh way that it is used it has a particular way that it is used um so as we continue on with programming you're going to use most of these keywords like we are going to use if else uh we are going to use do while for when we are dealing with control structures go to switch case yeah main int main c out c in those are keywords that are used for different things yeah? return so those are keywords that are used for different things and we are going to see them as we continue coding and see how they are used for it um let's move on to C++ operators. What is an operator? An operator is a symbol that is used to perform operations uh, like mathematical operations, logical operations, bitwise operations, etc. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are three, eight kinds of operators in C++, and these operators are the same ones in C. So uh, I think you remember these kinds of operators when you are studying C. Yeah. So we, we need to look at these operators and what they do. So we begin with what? We begin with arithmetic operators. Arithmetic operators are operators that are used to perform mathematical calculations. Okay mathematical calculations right uh let me uh, 
arithmetic operators are supposed to perform mathematical calculations like uh, addition subtraction these ones there addition subtraction multiplication division and modulus here we show up in it on modulus in a kappa center up in it on modulus yeah? modulus now could return remainder yeah yeah could return remainder here kwanza is sum i think you already know it yeah this one is sum for calculating the sum of two numbers this one is for subtracting this one is for multiplying this one is for dividing and then this one it's also for dividing but when you use it it will not return the answer it will return the remainder so when you when you say when you use 10 modulus 2 in c plus plus when you use 10 divided by 2 10 to me i yeah divide when you use 10 divided by 2 it will give you 5 okay but if you use 10 modulus 2 it will give you what kama e modulus in but a remainder after a division so 10 modulus 2 the answer is what 10 modulus 2 like 10 10 divide by 2 10 divide by 2 is equals to Five, yeah. Now, who else can 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 anybody hear me? I hope uh, that you can hear me. Bongoko says that uh, Bongoko says that you can't hear me. I am not muted. All right. So if Justin can hear me, then it means that I can be heard from your end. So Bongoko, Angalia, what's up with your end? So, what is 10 modulus 2? If 10 divided by 2 is 5, what is 10 modulus 2 is what? 0. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You are getting it. Yeah. So, the modulus is used to return the remainder after a division. Okay, and we are going to use it uh, in coding uh, some given instances. Then those are called arithmetic. They are used to perform arithmetic operations. Then there are what we call relational operators. Relational operators are used to compare. They are used to compare between two operands. Now, I need to introduce another term there, an operand. An operand is a value, an operand is a value being worked on by an operator. All right? An operand is a value being worked on by an operator. So, for instance, if you say x plus y, x plus y, uh, or we say z is equals to x z is equal to x plus y then i tell you identify the operators and the operands can somebody identify z is equal to x plus y identify the operators and the operands actually operands plural identify the operators and the operands Yes, operands are uh, x and y. Which one are there? There is another. Z, yes. There are three operands. Z, y, x, true. And which are the operators? Operands are Z, Y, X, that is true. Then operator, they are two, equal and plus. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then we continue. So, operands, operands, 
are x y and z then operators are equal and plus those are the operands and the operators and remember operands is d not t operands d not t d for dog all right operands not uh operands it is d all right then so uh relation operators are used to compare compare they are used to compare different variables like for instance if we say if x is greater than y then display x or display greatest numbers equals to x so in that kind of statement x greater than this one is called greater than this one is called less than this one is called greater than or equal to this one is called less than or equal to this one is called equal to but it is not the equal the normal equal this the normal equal sign it's called an assignment operator okay this one the equal let me show it here the equal sign is called an assignment operator like this one okay the assignment operator then those are assignments operators yeah it assigns a value to another value yeah so this is an equal sign for comparing whether a number is equal to another is x equal to y if it is true then something is returned then this one is called not equal to not equal to yeah it's called the logical the logical uh, it's called the inverse relational it's called the inverse of of the equal it's the inverse of the equal so it's like the opposite of the equal then and uh don't worry we are going to be using them a lot so they are going to should be showing up as we program so uh, we are just going through them first then logical operators logical operators are used as uh I remember you were taught something to do with probably digital logic or binary operations or um, uh, mathematical compu uh, computational math. I uh, remember and, or, nor, those kinds of things, not, yeah? So they are also represented in C++ using these kinds of operators, these, the, the logical operators and, uh, sorry, the and the this is called the logical and, right? This is called the logical or, the logical or two straight bars, and this is called the logical not, the logical not. Okay, then we are going to see how they are used. Then B twice operators. This is called the ampersand, ampersand. All right ampersand it's called the ampersand you met it in structured programming yeah this is called the the bar or the b twice bar this is called shift left this is called shift right this is called the this is called the power for finding power and uh i'm going to look for the name for that that is the name for that. Please, somebody remind me. It's going out of my mind, right? Uh huh. And then we have assignment operators. This is called the equal. This is called plus equal. This is called minus equal. This is called times equal. This is called divide equal. This is called modulus equal. Okay. Now, how are these assignment operators? important they're important when you are performing operations when you are performing operations now let me see where we are so that we can go together let me see now i want us to do a little bit of coding so that we can show how they they work and the first thing, let me share this screen. Okay. 
Let me share the screen here. All right, the screen is shared. Now, I want us to look at how these kinds of uh, operators are used. Now, let's begin with the arithmetic operators and see how they are used in programming. So you can actually open code blocks and uh, you can actually do uh, whatever I'm doing. You can follow through and do whatever I'm doing. But the first thing before we look at these operators, I need to teach you two things, see in and see out. See in and see out. These are two very important concepts. You're running out of bundles. Who else is running out of bundles? Or you are tired? If you are just tired, you can say you are tired. You don't have to say you are running out of bundles. I can, we can resume the class in the next session. Yeah. All right, let's then let's let's do this then. Let's do this. We can uh, do the coding in the next class. Is that fine? For those who are running out of bundles and those who are those who are tired. Because the coding will require a lot of your attention. So can we resume the class next uh, week? Because it would require a lot of attention from your end. Okay, then. All right, thank you, Ambonio. Thank you, Muhia, Justin, Kanye, Linius, Purity. Thank you, Lucy, Warren. Thank you, Masi, Abdirashi, Dwari. Okay, then. So we have agreed that we're going to continue. And we are going now then to resume next week, ex, uh, specifically uh, <clears throat> with code blocks and seeing how these um, operators are used, okay? Operators and operands are used so that um, it can form the basis of our programming from now henceforth. In the next class, that's what I mean, Justin. Yeah, in the next class. The next class will be from 11 to 2. So in the next class. All right then, then, then have a good afternoon then. Uh, study whatever is there. Please find out from the, from the portal. There are uh, notes that I have put there. So have a good time and enjoy your, the rest of your afternoon and keep safe. Meet in the next class. Joy, joy, and you know, I think that we can see joy and get the back of the